and upsetting Lionel Messi, which is one of the great things where you can take the guy out of Burnley, but you can't take Burnley out of the guy. Hi, this is Mike. Welcome to my vlog about football in general in Burnley FC in particular. A vlog that was recently on holiday in Athens and I visited the Acropolis. And as I stood there marvelling at the site and what it represents in terms of a great historical civilization that influences even today, 2000 years later, I turned and heard a guy dressed head to toe in a full Liverpool kit look at the Parthenon and say, Hey, you call that history? It's the off-season, so it's quiet, which means everything is under a particular microscope as we're trying to divine what is going to happen this season, and the flap has happened already, and it involves the six foot six Dutch Chris Wood, a.k.a. Wout Weghorst. Now, for background, if you're not aware, if you're not a Burnley fan of aware of the story, Wout Weghorst was uh, part of the Burnley team that got relegated, and he said that he was not going to play in the championship for Burnley. In fact, he actually had an agreement that he would not be playing in the championship for Burnley. Part of his reasoning for this was that he is a Dutch international and he wanted to play in the World Cup in Qatar. Burnley had that agreement, they honoured that agreement, and uh, he, they sent him out on loan to Besiktas, which was quite successful. Veghorst did make it to the World Cup, where he was massively effective in one particular game, scoring, I think, two goals and upsetting Lionel Messi, which is one of the great things where you can take the guy out of Burnley, but you can't take Burnley out of the guy. He then moved from Besiktas to Manchester United, where he was less successful, but he did end up with a League Cup winner's medal, so defined unsuccessful. But his loan has ended and he has returned back to Turf Moor. Now, we don't know if he's going to play for us this season. Uh, my own personal view is I would like to see him play for us this season. But um, some people never forgot that he was direct and honest about not playing for Burnley in the Championship. And that is all it was. He did not attack the club. He did not slag off the management or anything like that. He struggled. Absolutely, he struggled. But then, so did the entire squad. We got relegated. But he is Dutch. He was honest and he was perhaps too straightforward and direct when he said he's not playing for Burnley in the Championship. And therefore, he became public enemy number one in the eyes of a minority of fans. And when he turned up for pre-season, and uh, when he was in the squad for this weekend's friendly away in Genk, people, fans, Burnley fans, a minority of, I must emphasise that, a minority of Burnley fans, booed him. They booed his every touch. They booed him coming on as a substitute. And... There has been a flap about it, and I've been kind of thinking about this. I've been kind of thinking about the reception that Val Beghorst should have or has got. Like I said, he's been honest, he's been straightforward. But this is kind of a storm in the teacup that's being whipped up because, you know, off-season, people need content, people need clicks. There's some talk of, like, a dressing room feud with Connor Roberts. Where this comes from is when Roberts was playing for Wales prior to the World Cup and uh, Beghorst was playing for the Netherlands. Apparently, at the end of the game, Roberts turned around to Veghorst and said, why can't you play like that for Burnley? To which Veghorst replied, shut up. Now, that in is, of itself is quite amusing, but to take it as some kind of irreparable split in the dressing room is ridiculous. Connor Roberts is feisty. Connor Roberts will give more than he'll take. He's really, really... He's one of those players who just, you know, gets under your skin in more ways than one. And that on the pitch was typical Connor Roberts, you know, and that's all it is. And this idea that it's going to wreck the dressing room spirit, I've got a story for you. I used to work for a professional ice hockey team. And as you probably are aware, ice hockey allows fighting. Fighting is usually done between two guys who are basically paid to fight big guys. And one day, uh, right in front of me on the ice, uh, was a fight between two mid-sized skill players who don't normally fight 
and they were basically tearing lumps out of each other. And it was a shock to see two players really going at it who don't normally go at it. They were kicked out of the game. And then about 10 minutes later, I happened to just turn around and I saw those two players. And they were talking to each other and they were sharing a beer. Because when you've got professional athletes, what happens on the pitch stays on the pitch. Connor Roberts was winding up Mount Weghorst because he was on the opposition. The idea that they're taking that feud off the grass and into the dressing room playing for a club is ridiculous. And to sort of turn around and say, this guy's bad for dressing room spirit or whatever. You know, Connor Roberts will have said stuff on the training ground that's upset other players. Is Connor Roberts bad in the dressing room? I don't think so. So it's kind of, you know, trying to find something that isn't actually there. Ultimately, you could argue whether people have the right to boo or not. But that kind of misses the point. And it sets the argument on the wrong ground. People booing Val Weghorst are booing Val Weghorst because he's done something particularly egregious. They're booing because they want to boo somebody. He just happens to be a target that they think they can justify. And if you get into the argument of should you boo a player or not, then that's moving it onto that ground. The answer is no, you shouldn't. It's as simple as that. It's not just, you know, Val Weghorst for saying what he said, which, by the way, there's nothing wrong with. Robbie Brady got booed last season. He got booed because he was playing for Preston. Now, Brady was excellent for Burnley, but he suffered a bad injury and he was not the same player afterwards. And eventually we just parted ways. He moved on. Yet people booed him when he turned up in a Preston shirt. For what? Playing for Preston? Really? Apparently it would have been fine if he'd signed for someone else. Yeah, right. You want to put money on that? Got another story for you. A few years ago, I was at a home game, FA Cup match. Can't remember the opposition. Joe Hart was in goal. And a guy to the left of me, a couple of rows behind. Every time that Joe Hart touched the ball, you know, it might have been a back pass or something like that. He basically stood up and shouted, Way! You know, the old sarcastic, Way! Every time Joe Hart touched the ball. And I think it was the match where Loughton basically sold him short for a goal. You know, it was a back pass. Loughton completely screwed it up. It Hart, you know, had no chance and the, the opposition guy put it in the back of the net. And this guy felt justified in his criticism, and was giving it even more. But the main thing was, he was looking around after every time he did it, with this big shitty grin on his face, going, look at me, aren't I clever, aren't I special, aren't I, you know, the character? Well, everyone else just looked at him and thought, you're a tosser, mate, you really are a tosser. Because ultimately, booing a player or booing Val Weghorst, is not about Weghorst comments at all. Booing Robbie Brady is not about the fact that he's played for Preston. Booing Joe Hart is not about him not well being Nick Pope or Tom Heaton. It's about being able to bully from a safe space. I think it's about being able to abuse people without fear or consequences. I think it's about feeling powerful for once. And if the player, the human being, at the end of it, is upset by that, well, shut up, it's part of the job, dry your eyes using those £20 notes that we're all paying you in huge wages every week. I mean, God knows I'm no angel at match, I'm really not. Um, I try to behave myself, I try to get better. I probably lost it a couple of times and frankly I've sat down and felt embarrassed at my actions, you know, some of the things I've shouted and I try to learn from it each time. But I'm not talking about sanitising the football experience. You give a bit, you take a bit, and that's the way it goes. But this is different. I mean, this is just... It's a pre-season game in the middle of July in Belgium that doesn't matter. And yet your first instinct is to start booing your own players. For, for what? You know? But this, you know, this is a bit different. And it's a bit different because I think it's one of two things. 
the first thing is something I talked about in the last video, which is this idea that I'm a better fan than you. My club, Burnley FC, right or wrong, I defend my club at all times, no matter what, and I'll do it more than you will. Veghorst was not committed to Burnley FC as much as I am, so he must be abused to show the error of his ways. This idea that you must show 100% commitment at all times or you're not a good fan. I turned your video off when you weren't supporting Ashley Barnes, so back the team or fucking shut up. Yeah, well, didn't listen to the rest of it, did you, fella? But it is this idea of being better, being more dedicated, being more committed. You know, I will boo my player apparently is going to be more committed as a Burnley fan than not booing a player in the Burnley shirt. How is that supposed to work? The second thing is it's the cowardice of anonymity. How do you get a crowd to shout abuse at people? It's no different to sitting behind a keyboard and tweeting it out. Or is it Xing it out these days? Anyway, it's bullying. But like all bullies at heart, it's coming from a coward. And these people are ultimately taking out their frustrations on someone who doesn't deserve it. Of someone who, you know, ultimately will hopefully not be affected by it, who definitely is mentally stronger than the person showing the abuse. And the only thing I can say is, you know, to these people who feel this need, this pathological need to abuse football players, is that I hope you find the happiness that's missing someday, you know, that, that void in your life, because. Ain't no way to go through things, you know. I see this idea of what it is supposed to be to be a football fan, this kind of media-fed idea. You see it in kind of, you know, football hooligan documentaries. and You see the, you know, the idea that's given to you in advertising, you know, the perfect life in front of a sofa watching the match. I mean, it has nothing to do with football, but people are encouraged to be that way. They're, they're encouraged to defend their club at all costs, to stand there and be that representative of the club, to feel that affinity to the club. Not because it's good for the club or it's good for fandom, but it's good to be able to sell them something based on it. You know, it's kind of like, you know, clubs do take advantage of it as well. You know, they do, you know, to sell merchandise or whatever. You've got to have this, you've got to have that, or else you're not a good fan. But ultimately, booing about Veghorst at a pre-season friendly in Genk is just sad and you know I'll probably get comments on this I'll probably get negative comments sitting behind a keyboard and sticking it in a YouTube comment but really just look at yourself in a mirror booing about Veghorst in Genk in July for a pre-season friendly. Is that really where you've got to in life? If you've got any comments about this video, please feel free to leave them down below and I will respond where I can. If you liked it, click the like button. And if you like what I do, have a look around the rest of the channel and click subscribe to be notified when I produce new content.